Hi, I'm Paula Storm. This week I was feeling a little bit unmotivated and I really struggled to come up with an idea of what I could make for this week's video. So I took a look around my house and I was looking for something that would be both a quick and easy finish but also would be really amazing when it was finished because I knew that would get me back into my crafty groove. And I think I've found a great project that you might like to have a go at too. So let's go craft up a storm. So a few years ago, my sister and I started a business called Crafty Adventures, and we took amazing ladies and a few gents on cruises and trips overseas and all around the world, and we had the most amazing time. One of our tutors that we brought on one of our cruises was the amazing Deirdre Ace. Deirdre is the crochet queen. She makes the most incredible projects, and I'll share some pictures of her projects with you now. So Sophie's Universe was the very first project of Deirdre's that I think most of us who are crocheters fell in love with. It is the most incredible blanket and I really loved making my um, Sophie's Universe blanket. My daughter, my 16 year old, is actually making another version of, um, of Sophie's Universe right now and it's turning into the most beautiful project. But another thing that Deirdre did out of her Sophie's Universe um, blanket was she created a cover for a footstool and I absolutely fell in love with this footstool and I immediately bought a uh, footstool uh, that I could make a cover for. I, I could make a Sophie's stool um, using that pattern. Of course time gets away from you, we all get busy and I never ended up making that stool but I had that stool sitting in my lounge room for years, <laughs> at least two or three years and it got a bit grotty and it got well used and well loved but it just sat there my dog even had a chew on it <laughs> but i have always wanted to make that that cover for this cushion i knew that i was not going to get time to do that crocheted version so i thought why not do a fabric version so that's what i'm going to do today i'm going to sew a cover for this footstool so that i have a beautiful finished product that was inspired by deirdre's sophie's stool First up, I'm going to grab out my fabric and give it a really good press. I'm using some flasher here because I find that really helps get out um, all those hard and stubborn creases. The other thing I'm using, if you're a quilter, you may not have heard of the Cricut Easy Press. This iron is basically for ironing um, heat transfer vinyl onto t-shirts, but it is fantastic for quilters as well. It's basically one big iron and the whole bottom of it heats up so you can iron large sections or large pieces of fabric in um, a really short amount of time. The other thing I love about this iron is it has a temperature gauge on it so you can actually choose the temperature that you want to use to um, iron your work. Uh, so in this case I usually set it to around 180 and I find that's perfect for this heavier weight coca fabric. So there's my two fabrics. I'm still not sold on the dandelion fabric, the mustard fabric. I really struggle to decide whether to use that or not. I absolutely love this one, however. This is again a coca fabric, and these are just, they're really cute together, but I wasn't 100% sure, so I kept going back and forth. Do I just do the, the one or do I do both? I still couldn't decide, so I thought I'd go back to that later. Next job is to measure all of my pieces and make a note of all of the sizes uh, that I needed for each piece. So my circle measured 10 and 3 quarter inches. I then grabbed my tape measure and measured around the band of the cushion or the cover and that measured 35 inches and of course I needed the height as well which was four and a half inches. I then decided to use a seam allowance of half an inch. So I added an inch to the circle measurement and I also added an inch to the band and I added an inch to the height. Now I do tend to make at least one big mess up on each project and the band height was the mistake for this project. So I'm about to cut my band at five and a half inches which is a big boo-boo, don't do it, don't do it. Yeah, I did it. 
So that piece is actually wrong. The other thing I noticed when I opened up this band was that my pattern wasn't actually straight on the piece. So while I technically cut the piece straight, the pattern wasn't straight. So I decided to do something I would never normally do. I trimmed my fabric up to the pattern so that even though the piece wasn't technically straight, it would look to be straight on the finished project. This bottom edge doesn't matter too much because it's going to be gathered up underneath with an elastic casing, but the top edge is what I'm most worried about. So that top edge that I'm going to cut next will be correct. It was about this time that I also realized my five and a half measurement, five and a half inch measurement wasn't actually going to be enough because I didn't add enough for that piece to really tuck underneath and to create that elastic casing. So I checked that I had my half inch at the top and then I decided that the seven inches was probably going to be right, but I wanted to double check. So I pulled out the old cover and I measured it and it measured out to be about six and a half inches, including the seam allowance. Um, so I decided to add seven inches to my piece because I didn't want any raw edges in the underneath part. This is where I was trying to decide about how to cut it and I decided to cut to the pattern uh, because I wanted that top edge to really look straight in the finished piece. Knowing what I know now I'm really happy that I did trim it um, to the pattern because it really did make a difference and it made it look much straighter in the finished project. So next step or last step for the band is to trim it to length. So I've used my um, cutting mat and I've cut it to 36 inches. Now one of the biggest tips I'll give you for making this sort of cover is to constantly check um, that your measurements are right and that it's going to fit around your piece because there's nothing worse than doing all this work and then discovering that um, it's not going to fit. So after I'd cut the band, it was time to cut out my circle. Now, obviously my fabric choice had been made for me because I messed up that first cut. So I didn't actually have enough fabric left to make um, the top of it with my, um, my bare fabric. So we decided to go with the dandelion and I love how it turned out. So what I did here is without, I didn't actually have a circle that was the right size. So I found the center of my piece by folding it uh, in four and really giving it a good finger press. You can see the lines that I finger pressed for the, um, the four, um, four sections or the four quarters of this fabric. And what I did was just find the center point and mark uh, 11 and 3 quarter inches across the piece all the way around and then I just filled in the gaps and I had a perfect circle or as perfect as it needed to be. I then took another ruler and double checked or rather triple checked that the width or the diameter of my circle was the, um, the correct measurement. Best to double or triple check than to mess up again. <laughs> I then took a really tiny rotary cutter. I really love small rotary cutters uh, for cutting curves. I just find they're so much easier to cut curves than with scissors, um, especially if you have a sharp blade, which of course I didn't. But I really, really recommend these mini um, rotary cutters for cutting out tight curves. Now that I had my beautiful circle, it was of course time to check again, double, triple check to make sure that I'd cut my circle in the right shape. I only had one piece of that fabric, so I really needed to get it right. When I'm working on a piece that needs to be joined into a loop or into a circle, I really like to do as much prep as I can while the piece is still flat. So right here what I'm doing is folding up the bottom edge to create my hem. So I folded it over once and pressed it, then folded it up again to do a double fold hem. By folding that hem up first, I'm basically saving myself the, the stress and the, and the struggle of trying to fold that hem up once it's already been joined into a circle. So that preparation really is key. So next up, we take the band over to the sewing machine. And as I mentioned, I've used a half inch seam allowance. So I'm following that half inch line on my machine, the bed of my machine to get that perfect half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna press this seam allowance open 
and then I can fold up that bottom edge. In this case, my bottom hem is also going to be an, a casing for elastic. So what I'm doing here is just clipping my hem up all the way around, but I'm also adding two clips at the start and the end of my seam. And that way the section that's in between those four clips, I need to leave open. It's just a visual reminder for me um, to know where to start, but also especially where to stop sewing. So I'm going to move my needle over so it's right on the edge of that hem. So I know that I'm going to get a nice even seam and then I can use the side of my foot as a guide and I can watch um, the fabric and make sure it's, it's in the right position. There I just took out my last two clips that were right next to each other and that reminds me that it's time to stop so that I leave that section open for the elastic to be slid into the hem. So now I'm going to take out my stool once again and do another test fit. I was absolutely loving it at this stage. It, everything fit and I had enough on the bottom um, to add elastic. Now what I'm doing is dividing my band into four equal pieces just by popping a pin in those four points um, all around the band. That way, when it comes time to take my circle, I know exactly where those four points need to line up. So I'm going to pop my pieces right sides together and I'm using the finger pressed lines that I made earlier for my circle and they're going to be the four points where I pop in those pins. I'm going to add clips in between so that everything is pinned together nice and easily for me that to then take it to the sewing machine. So I'm starting at um, the hem and I'm just going to take it really nice and slow and steady. After all, sewing is the most fun part. So I don't understand when some people really rush through the actual sewing stage. It looks like I sewed a pleat in just there, but I, I didn't. I actually sewed this piece completely without any puckers, which was a really nice change for me. So basically this sewing is actually sped up four times um, because well, we don't all have all day. So I wanted to get through this sewing part um, fairly quickly. So you can see it's, um, it's sped up four times. So I really am sewing really slowly to make sure that I get a nice um, perfect seam that doesn't have any puckers. Just all I can say is take your time when you're sewing circles. It really does make a massive difference to sew nice and slow. I also like to sew with the circle or the curved edge on the bottom. Everybody has their own preference, but for me, that's the way I like to do it. So guess what time it is now? Yep, test fit time once again. So I popped my cover on and it looked fantastic. I was so happy with it and it fit perfectly. So the next step is to top stitch that seam allowance down um, so that my seams inside were nice and neat. So I took it over to my machine and I lined up the edge of my foot so that I was sewing about a 3 8 inch line. And while I was sewing this, I was using my fingers and occasionally looking underneath as well to make sure that my seam allowances were all facing towards the bottom or towards um, the the band rather than towards the circle because that I knew was going to look much neater um, in the end. So now that my circle is in and top stitched it's time for another test fit. <laughs> so at this stage I was absolutely in love with my stool cover. I absolutely loved it and I was actually second guessing whether I would add elastic into that band or not because I really liked how it looked just hanging down like that. So while I was undecided, I thought I might as well try and just thread some elastic through. So after searching and finding a safety pin, I thought I would thread the elastic through just maybe half of um, the stool or even just a quarter to see what it would look like. Right there, I was trying to add the elastic in where the seam allowance was and it was getting a bit stuck. So I decided to switch directions um, and avoid that seam allowance and it was much easier to thread it through in this direction. So I threaded the elastic through part of it and gave it a tug just to see what it looked like and I decided, yeah, I think I do like the elastic. So I went ahead and finished pushing the elastic through the entire casing. 
Once I'd finished, I popped it back on the stool and just pulled on the elastic until it was nice and firm or firm enough and it looked nice and neat. I also needed to keep in mind that I needed to be able to get this off the stool. So I didn't want the elastic to be too tight. I wanted it to be able to come off nice and easy. So I popped my safety pin on and closed it up so that I could test and make sure that it came off nice and easily and it did. So it was time to head to the machine and sew that elastic down. Now originally I was going to stitch that elastic and um, secure it that way, but I decided seeing it was going to be tucked underneath, it would be just as easy to tie the elastic into a knot. So I just tied it into a knot and then finished stitching down that hem so that the casing was completely enclosed. I also made the, sure that the knot was um, out of the way so it was nice and easy to stitch that casing. So time to put it on for the final time now that it's completely finished and does it fit? You bet it does. How does it look? It looks amazing. I was so happy with my stool. Oh, I better show you up the right way. Check out that dandelion fabric. Isn't it perfect? I absolutely love it and I think it turned out brilliantly. But I'm not stopping there. If you remember Deirdre's original Sophie's stool, she had the most adorable crocheted feet on her stool. So I knew I had to make them too. To create a pattern, I just took some computer paper, wrapped it around the leg, and then trimmed it to be the right circumference. I then just trim away the excess paper to make it a bit easier on myself. And I used some washi tape just to close up that, um, that paper so I could draw a line around the bottom of the foot. Because this wasn't going to be a straight line, by doing it this way, I can create a perfect pattern really quickly and easily. So I peel back the washi tape so I could open it up flat again. And then I drew on that line a bit heavier just so I could see it nice and easily. I once again used my little rotary cutter. I wonder if that's the reason it's not sharp anymore. <laughs> Probably. But anyway, I trimmed it to be the right shape and then I once again popped it back on my stool just to test fit and make sure that the shape was right. It was right, so it was time to transfer my pattern over to some cardstock, which would be much uh, heavier and easier to use as a template. So after realizing I had to have the template up that way so that my bears were facing the right way, I traced my template onto my fabric. This is the fabric that I messed up earlier on, so it's using up that five and a half inch strip. Once again, I'm doing preparation before I sew this into a circle, so I'm uh, folding down my um, hem and once again testing it to make sure it fits onto my piece. Now in this case, I didn't do a double fold hem, I only did a single fold because I didn't want it to be bulky. Um, I wanted it to lay nice and flat on the feet. So here I am using that cardboard template as a, a real guide and I've just folded up the fabric and pressed it using that cardboard template. It makes it so much easier to fold up that curved edge at the bottom. So I repeated this step with my second and then third and fourth pieces and then folded them in half and stitched my seam allowance. In this case, I used a 3 8 inch seam allowance, once again, just to cut down on some of that bulk. Now, this is probably the hardest step of the whole process. Once you've got that side seam closed, I needed to top stitch that top hem. Because these pieces are so small, it was really tricky to get it under the, um, the bed of the machine or under the needle and to stitch it, that top stitch that hem. All I did was once again take it super slow, sew a few stitches and then readjust, sew a few more, readjust until I got all the way around and had a nice neat top stitch around the top of my foot. Once again, I'm going to test fit it onto the leg of my stool and just make sure that that seam allowance is hanging out over the right edge. Now one tip I'll give you at this stage, when you're making your template for your feet, you want to make sure that the join of the paper is in the, um, the spot where you want your seam allowance to be in the end. So you want it to 
hide on the inside of the legs rather than being on the front edge. So while it's a bit more awkward at the start, you'll have a much better finish in the end. So I'm sorry my face cam didn't work on this, so you've only got that one angle here. But what I'm doing is just tracing out another cardboard template to create some feet for my stool. So I've grabbed out some of my felt and I'm tracing the circle onto my felt. Now when I first did this, I actually cut a about a quarter inch seam allowance on this as well because I was thinking about sewing these feet on. But as you saw from the top stitching of the hem, it was so awkward to get that under my the bed of my machine. I knew there was no way I was going to be able to sew this felt circle onto the bottom of the foot. So I decided to trim it even with my template and I'm actually just going to glue the felt on. Um, I think it's going to look fine and if I want to, I can always go back and hand stitch the felt onto my piece. So to finish up, I am just going to do a running stitch or a gathering stitch around the base of each of the feet. So this is going to help me um, pull that seam allowance nice and tight around the bottom of the foot so that I get a really neat finish. So as I said, I just do that running stitch and before I tie it off or pull it tight, I'm just going to pop it back onto my foot, make sure my seam allowance is where I want it, hidden on the inside, and then I'll pull it, the gathering stitch tight. I do a couple of stitches and even a knot just to hold that gathering stitches in place. And I even grabbed out my iron and popped the iron on to make sure that seam allowance was nice and flat before I finally pull out some glue. Now I first off used some Roxanne's glue, but it wasn't strong enough to hold the felt. So I grabbed for some heavier tacky glue that worked perfectly. Another thing I did was make sure that the glue wasn't close to the edges because when I, if I want to hand stitch that down, I want to be able to stitch through it and not hit glue every few stitches. So once I'd glued it on, I was done. So what do you think? Oh my goodness, I am absolutely in love with this stool. I could not be happier with it. I've got my beautiful mustard fabric here that I um, that I absolutely love from Japan. I've got this cute little bear fabric uh, from Koka and I got that at my local patchwork shop. I'll share a link for that in the, in the description below. But I am absolutely in love with it, especially the little feet. I've even got a few little bears poking out to say hello down on their feet. So this project took me uh, literally three and a half hours. It was super quick and it really has motivated me to get back to being creative. I can't believe it took me nearly three years to finally make a cover and I absolutely love it. I love this mustard color. It's so on trend right now and I especially love the little feet. I probably will eventually stitch those down. That's why I kept the glue right um, away from the edges so that if I wanted to I could stitch that on. But for the moment I think it's going to stay and I'm really quite happy with it. I especially love that the little bear is waving out to say hello right in the middle of the leg. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's video. I hope it inspires you to get out a project that you've been putting off um, for years and get it out and get it finished because it really is the best way to get back into your crafty groove. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Please like um, the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment for me down below and I reply to every single comment. So I love reading your comments and I love the ideas that you guys give me um, to make different videos or ideas for different videos that I can make in the future. I'd also love it if you could subscribe to my channel. I think nearly 80% of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed. So it really does make a difference to my channel and I really appreciate it if you could subscribe. But thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye.